Apple, let's face it, you've been caught with your pants down. Are you ready? Definitely, I am ready and I hope that you are too because we're going to discuss about this M2 Pro right here. The SSDs on these machines are and who is it for exactly and what you can do with it. And you must know how this works first. That's why I think today it's very important that we talk about something that is absolutely fantastic with this M2 Pro right here. And that is of course its performance and overall efficiency. And both the raw performance and efficiency of the laptop come from one place and that is the SOC. For those of you out there who are interested in testing this machine, well definitely I have some scores for you with Cinebench R23 and Geek. Geekbench. Running Geekbench 6 here, as you can see, we have some single core score and some multi core score being of 2653 and 14222 overall. GPU metal score, which gave us a whopping result of over 79,000. I've also went ahead and ran the GPU OpenCL benchmarks and uh, that gave us a score of almost 50,000. And for those of you who actually love synthetic workloads, I've uh, went ahead and ran Cinebench R23 on this machine and for the CPU multi score we got a score of 14,719 points, putting this SoC well above the Intel Core i9 9880H CPU and just below an AMD Threadripper. And of course the multi core score was something but definitely we had to go ahead and do a single core test and that gave us a result of 1634 points. But uh, how about the temperatures? One worrying fact that I have seen running Cinebench R23 on this machine is definitely the temperatures right here. So overall when running the CPU multi-score on Cinebench we have a maximum power of around 66.4 watts but that's definitely not worrying. The worrying fact is the high temperatures both on the core average and on a few of the cores of this machine. The average actually peaked at 103 degrees Celsius and there were a few cores which actually hit 107 and 108 degrees Celsius respectively. All of this happening of course with the fans not really doing very much sitting at around 1300 to 1400 RPM so definitely Apple it is going to do something that Apple did a very long time ago and continues to do so which is to basically sacrifice your CPU you or in this case the SOC well you know for your pleasure and comfort of not hearing the laptop ramp up all right so testing is one thing but what about Google Chrome and opening up a bunch of tabs because I know for sure that can be a backbreaker Chrome can be absolutely notorious so let's open up some uh, some tabs whatever and see exactly what's happening with the memory. Okay, so right now, as you can see, with about uh, 17 tabs open on Google Chrome, because this is definitely a realistic scenario for most of the people. Uh, I have some other things opened up in the background here, as you can see. We are actually over the capacity of the total memory that we can use. Uh, although it says here that around 14.2 gigabytes of video memory, or I should say of RAM, is being used, and the physical memory installed is about six gigs we are actually using some cache files as well and we are going to use that SSD and as you can see right now we're swapping the memory between the SSD or the NAND chip and the RAM that is installed on here so this is the LPDDR5 memory chiplets and we are going to eat into the longevity of the overall SSD during the years because of the swap memory that we are using. Uh, this is not okay, especially for the fact that we are running only one NAND chip on this 512 gigabytes model. And this is going to affect, of course, the speed that we are running the machine at because, well, Apple was a and it continues to be by just providing us with only one NAND chip when they should actually stand up to the fact that they're asking $2,500 for this laptop right here and we're getting half of the performance of last year's M1 Mac. Come on Apple, this ain't Craigslist and for $2,500 I don't find this acceptable. So this brings me to the very important point of actually paying Apple more, unfortunately, for that extra 16 gigabytes of RAM in the machine because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you are going to often use this swap memory because that is overall going to basically decrease the longevity of your laptop and not only that, but you're not going to get the full potential out of it either. So, you know, if you are going to spend that much money, maybe it's a good idea and a good investment to actually spend that extra little bit more 
to get what you're really paying for. Because Apple is such a by limiting, once again, the SSD by only installing one NAND chip. I can't really get over it, I'm sorry guys. I'm really pissed off. The technical term for the M2 inside this laptop is basically not a CPU because it differs from the x86 architecture and it's called an SOC, which stands for System on a Chip. Just try to imagine that you have everything neatly packed together into one silicon wafer where you have both your CPU, your GPU, you have also your RAM in there and something that Apple calls the neural engine tying all together. There is actually one other thing that helps the efficiency and that's basically the fact that they're basing all this ARM architecture on the 5 nanometer technology. And of course as you might think the smaller the components get then definitely the higher the efficiency and the overall performance of the laptop. In the basic configuration this laptop right here comes with uh, 12 cores in total and out of those 12 8 being performance cores and 4 being efficiency cores with the rated efficiency of the performance cores being 3.7 gigahertz and the efficiency cores going all the way up to 3.4 gigahertz depending on the workload. Of course this alongside with the LPDDR5 RAM which is in there which is going all the way up to 6400 megahertz it's going to help a lot the efficiency of those cores to achieve maximum performance whenever the workload requires. Uh, and not only that of course but depending on the workload that you have with this laptop the SOC alongside with the operating system is going to distribute the amount of RAM that it's going to allocate for both the CPU and GPU working together one of them getting more one of them getting less depending on the workload but also the wattage is going to be distributed according to the task at hand between the CPU and the GPU and in many case scenarios you can actually get the GPU to use more watts than the actual CPU the display it's it's an absolute beast the resolution of this display which is a liquid retina xdr display it's actually 3456 by 2234 and it is a 16.2 inch in diagonal the xdr stands for extreme dynamic range and that it's all down to the 1 million to 1 contrast ratio and the brightness of it actually reaching 1000 nits sustained full screen or about 1600 nits uh, in peak when using hdr content a very nice thing about the screen is definitely its refresh rate so you have your ProMotion technology which is adaptive that means that basically it can drop down to one hertz whenever you are reading text to conserve the battery and overall to maintain the efficiency of the laptop but it can also go up to 120 hertz in refresh rates there are some fixed rates in there as well like 4795 48 50 59 and basically 60 hertz as well if you want to go with that but if you want to leave it on auto then definitely is going to do its best to represent whatever use case you throw added for the memory configuration of this laptop you basically have your 16 gigabytes of unified memory that is the standard benchmark so that is uh, where all things begin this is very fast memory uh, lpddr5 is the name of the game here with 6400 megahertz of speed so that's pretty fast but it can actually be configured to 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes on the m2 max variant or even as high as 96 gigabytes of memory with the m2 max and 38 core of GPU. Don't forget once again I will leave down in the video description a table where you can check some of the use cases and how much memory you are going to need so definitely when specking out this laptop it is very important that you choose the right amount for your use case. The battery on this machine is actually pretty amazing. It is rated at 100 watt hour and it is a lithium polymer battery so it's going to be okay to carry around on any sort of airplane anywhere in the world because it just sits shy of the limitation uh, when it comes to being able to pack it in your backpack and travel around with it not only that you also get a fast USB-C power adapter so uh, that is rated at 140 watts so you are going to be able to load up the battery quite fast on this machine and with light usage of this machine you can definitely achieve a few days worth of battery out of this machine without carrying a charger with you storage configuration on this machine starts at 512 gigabytes SSD that's only only one NAND flash once again so be very careful about that as you are going to get half the performance of the previous M1 generation max but it can be configured to one terabyte two terabytes four or even eight terabytes and you are definitely going to see that extra oomph in performance or I should say double the performance with any configuration above 512 because you are going to get that extra NAND chip that is required
required to unlock more uh, bandwidth communication channels with the SOCs. When it comes to the ports on this machine, you actually get the card reader right back. So you do have the SDXC card reader on one side. You have an extra Thunderbolt 4 and an HDMI 2.1 port on one side. And on the other side, you get your MagSafe 3 charging port alongside with two Thunderbolt 4 ports and one 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The HDMI 2.1 display port on this machine is actually amazing. You can actually support one 8K monitor at 60 Hertz, or if you are considering to hook up a 4K display, then definitely you can power that up all the way up to 240 Hertz over HDMI. The keyboard and trackpad are very nice as well on this machine. This machine overall is very sturdy. There is minimum flex to it. The chassis is built from recycled aluminum and it is very, very thick and sturdy and you don't feel any flex on it whatsoever. The keyboard is by now what we are used to. It has a force touch trackpad that is quite big. The keys on this machine are actually feeling amazing. Uh, they are what you would expect from Apple. They are very low travel keys, but they're not very fatiguing or at least in my case anyway I find them to be quite comfortable even after long sessions of using them but uh, it, it kind of comes down to you at the end user so uh, that's definitely up to you what is very nice though is that you are going to get one touch ID buttons so for all the situations where you have to input your password you don't have to do that anymore because definitely you can just hover your finger over the print there and it will just log you in very quickly all the time another nice feature is of course the very wide trackpad of this laptop right here this features force uh, touch trackpad for precise cursor control and pressure sensing capabilities enabling of course the force clicks accelerator pressure sensitive drawing and multi-touch gestures this is a pretty nice trackpad and i think is the best trackpad in the industry right now but okay once again it depends on your use case and of course on you so in the end, would I choose this laptop for my daily workflow? And the short answer is yes. I absolutely love the screen. I absolutely love the shape of the machine. The weight doesn't bother me and the performance is stellar. Even though Apple is a when it comes to the NAND chips installed on these machines and that they're skipping out on giving you that extra performance for this price point and I don't find this fair at all uh, I would definitely encourage you to spec it up to at least one terabyte so that at least you won't have that sort of problem and you are going to meet up the expectations of performance with the last year's generation MacBook One all right guys thank you so very much for choosing to watch today's video and if you have made it all the way till the end that's absolutely amazing and i would like to personally thank each and every one for doing so and don't forget you can hit me up in the comment section down below where i will do my best to answer each and every one of you as i always do and thank you so much for choosing to stay around for this video